And that's for you, my little man. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little buttercup, and well called. For you are the rosiest, the reddest, and the roundest beauty in all the spinning. Right. Right. But our key, my merry friend, has never thought that beneath a gay and frivolous exterior there lurks a canker worm which is slowly but surely eating its way into one's very heart. No, alas, I can't say I've ever thought that. I thought it. It all. Yes, you look like it. What's the matter with the man? Isn't he well? Oh, don't take no we name. It's only poor Dick Deadeye. I say, it's a beast of a name, maybe. Dick Gera. It's not a nice name. I'm only two, ain't I? You are certainly a uh, flag. And I'm three quarter two, ain't I? Uh, you are rather triangular. Uh, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I'm ugly and I hate me for it. For you all hate me, don't you? We do! Yeah. Well, Dick, we wouldn't go about that in the other fellas' feelings, but. You can't expect a chap with a name such as Dick Deadeye to be a popular character, can you? No. Well, it's asking too much. It is. From such a face and form as mine, even the noblest sentiments sound like the black utterances of a depraved imagination. It's human nature. I'm resigned. But tell me, who's the youth who's faltering feet with difficulty bearing on its course? That is the smartest lad in all the fleet, Rick Rackstraw. Brave, but brave. Grimoire, Grimoire.
climbed too high, and now our worthy Captain Shadowborn had nothing to do with a poor chap like you. Will she, lads? No. No, no. Captain's daughters don't marry former's hands. Dick Jedi, these symbols of York are disgrace to our common nature. It's a stranger normally that's a daughter of a man who hails from the court today may not love another who lays out before your arm. For a man is but a man, whether he was this flies in the main truck or he slashed in the main deck. Oh, yeah. That's a queer world. Dick that out of I have no desire to press hardly on him, but such a revolutionary sentiment is enough to make an honest sailor shudder. <laughs>
And Sir Joseph Porter, KCB will be here this afternoon to claim your promised hand. Oh, Father, your words cut me to the quick. I can esteem, reverence, venerate Sir Joseph, for he is a truly great and good man. But oh, I cannot love him. My heart is already given. It is then as I feared. Uh, given. And to whom? Not to some. <laughs> Gilded lordly. <laughs> no, father. The object of my love is no lordly. Oh, pity me, for he is but a humble sailor on board your own ship.
I am the monarch of the sea, the ruler of the queen's navy, whose praise Great Britain loudly chops. And we are your sisters and his cousins and his own. And they are sisters and his cousins and his own. When it anchor here I ride, my bosom swells with pride, and I snap my fingers in a permanent toss. And so do sisters and his cousins and his And so do sisters and his and his and his cousins But when the breezes blow, I generally go below and seek the seclusion that the cannon cross. And so do sisters and his cousins and his Captain Corcoran, 
Desire that splendid seaman to step forward. <laughs> no, no! The other splendid seaman! Oh, 
why poor, Rafe? I'm poor in the essence of happiness, lady. Rich only in the never-ending unrest. In me, there meets a combination of antithetical elements which are an eternal war with one another, driven hither by objective influences, thither by subjective emotions, and wafted one moment into blazing day, marking hope, plunged the next into the Sumerian darkness of tangible despair. I am but a living ganglion of irreconcilable antagonisms. <laughs> I, I hope I make myself clear, Major. Perfectly. His simple eloquence goes straight to my heart. Oh, if I dared. But no, the thought is madness. Dismiss these foolish fancies at once. They torture you but needlessly. Come, make one effort. I will. What? Josephine, come! I, even the Joseph Armory, were launched at the head of the audacious mortal whose lips unheld by relationship. Dare to breathe that precious word, yet would I breathe it once, and then perchance be silent evermore. Josephine, in one brief breath, I will concentrate the hopes, the doubts, the anxious fears of six weary months. Josephine, I am a British sailor, and I love you! Sir, this audacity! Oh, my heart, my beating heart! This unwarrantable presumption on the part of a common sailor! Common? Oh, the irony of the word! Sir, you forget the disparity in our ranks! I forget nothing, haughty lady! I love you desperately! My life is in your hand! I lay it at your feet! Give me hope in what I lack in polite accomplishments and education that I will endeavor to acquire! Drive me to despair in death alone. I should look for consolation. I am proud and cannot stoop to glory. I have spoken and I wait your word. You shall not wait long. Your prophet love I haughtily reject. Go, sir, and learn to cast your eyes on some village invaded in your own poor rank. They should be lower before your captain's daughter.